Um, but what would be your advice to, to upcoming actuaries when it comes to, let's say, salary negotiations? I know it's a little bit of a taboo topic to talk about that, but is it something that actuaries should just accept the first offer that they're given? Um, is there something where actuaries have room to negotiate? Um, yeah, how, how forward should we be when it comes to salary negotiations? So when it comes to an actuary or anyone's first job, uh, or an actuarial student's first job, I should say, um, they, it's very difficult for a person who doesn't have any work experience yet to really have any negotiating power. Um, from my side, personal experience, maybe it's because I didn't know any better. I definitely did. I definitely did accept the first offer that came my way. And looking back, it was a really bad salary. <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> but then of course you gain a few years of experience, then you get to your, well, maybe not a few years, depending on how quickly you move, but let's say you've maybe gone through one or two roles. It's been a year, maybe two. Now you get to the point where I think you do have a little bit of negotiating power. Um, and Look, I know that in South Africa, companies still ask you what you currently earn. And this is illegal in many U.S. states. So, and personally, I don't like it. I don't like the fact that I'm being asked what I earn um, when I go for an interview uh, or a chat. Because in the end, a company has to pay you what they believe you're worth or, or in any case, what they, thought, what they were thinking of paying that person, no matter who it was. Um, at the same time, I understand that there are, are cost um, constraints on companies. So, yes, companies still do that. I'm aware of that. Um, but I would say, just to come back to the question, um, for your first one, two, maybe three jobs, the chances are you won't be really be able to negotiate your salary other than to say, hey, this is what I'm currently earning. Please give me, let's say, 20% more. Um, I have to say also from personal experience, moving from my first uh, role with, where I was, prob I, I was probably in that role for two to three years, moving into my second role, I do believe I got something like a 60% increase on my first salary. So it will come. Mm -hmm. It really is just a case of get a little bit of experience then someone will be willing to pay you better. But I think it's in, in that general field, it's very much like in the accountancy field. Um, accountants who are still doing their, or would be accountants who are still doing their articles, are paid really badly. And in many respects, I think it's the same for actuarial students. Um, I was just going to say that I think if you work for a bit, then you also get a chance to realize your worth. So then, like, um, when you first start out, you don't really know, like, how good will I be at this job? Like, you're a bit uneasy, a bit uncertain. But once you've actually worked, you realize your skills and you realize, like, where your strengths lie. So then I think you feel like you have a bit more negotiating power. You're a bit more confident. I also think we shouldn't, uh, actuarial students shouldn't uh, disregard the big benefit that employers usually give around paying um, for their exams, giving them a significant amount of study leave as well, and also, of course, then paying for, for the, the, the uh, professional fees. That really does add up for a company. And of course, most companies nowadays expect you to pay it back if you leave. But of course, if you're going to another insurance company, chances are they'll pick up the tab and you'll be able to move across with them. And of course, that debt also tends to, dis to disappear over a few years' time. That's really